Hey, welcome back to K12 Analytics Engineering. I'm Marco Salcozer, and today I wanted to talk about how you can easily move Canvas LMS data into Google BigQuery. So Canvas actually offers a variety of ways to pull data out into other systems. It offers a GraphQL endpoint, if you're more familiar with that. They have a Canvas data service, which is really nice and exports data in a format that's ready to go for analytics. The problem there with Canvas data is that the data can be quite stale, and so you might pull assignment data, submission data, and it's 24 hours old. And so they are releasing a Canvas Data 2, uh, which I'm really excited for, but I believe the project's a bit delayed. We expected it last December, haven't seen it yet. And then they offer a traditional REST API, which is what we're going to be using today. Now what this code ends up doing is it replicates the Canvas API structure and data into Google BigQuery using nested and repeated fields. And we're gonna focus on extract and load first. So we're gonna pull the data out of Canvas, put it in BigQuery in its raw state. And then in future videos, we are going to use dbt to actually query that data and put it in a better structure for our analytics, for the reports we'll be building. And the structure that we're going to be using is the LMS unified data model that's provided to us by EdFi. So now I do want to mention that the EdFi Alliance does have the LMS toolkit, and that has extractors for Canvas and also for Schoology and Google Classroom. And so there's some overlap between what I'm showing you today, which is ETL code that I, that I wrote that you're going to run in Google Cloud Dataflow uh, to pull Canvas data with an extractor that the EdFi Alliance has created. But I think that's okay. I think there are these, these two options out here, and you can use your preferred one. And so the work that I'm talking about today, while it has a different extractor, future work is going to use the LMS unified data model, leveraging dbt to manage that work. Uh, and then we'll also have additional SQL queries to do that harmonization. Let's switch gears now and actually start looking at some of this. Okay, so we're starting off by looking at the Canvas LMS API documentation. This will list all of the API resources that are available. And as you scroll on the left side, you'll hit different ones such as assignments, and that will show you how to get your assignments, get them for a specific user, just get a specific assignment, create an assignment, etc. So this is a good resource to just look through to become familiar with the API and what's actually available in it. The second page I want to show you is the actual GitHub documentation for what we are using today. So I have a Canvas ETL repo that has the Apache Beam code. And this readme will walk you through how to actually uh, run this project in your local developer environment, so on your actual machine, and will also walk you through how to run it on the Dataflow runner in Google Cloud. What we are gonna be focusing on today is the bottom section here, which actually walks you through how to run this ETL process without touching any code. Uh, so I'll walk you through it on this video and you can follow what I'm doing or you can go to the repo and follow the steps here. I mentioned it before, but the code is written using Apache Beam, a nice programming model for batch and streaming data jobs. And so you'll wanna go to the Beam website and actually read a little bit about what Apache Beam is and, and how it functions. But I'll also put a link in the description to a Google specific resource on Apache Beam. So Google Cloud has written a little guide on the programming model for Beam that I found really helpful. I saw it as more of like a cliff notes of what Apache Beam is. And then there's also the Dataflow product page. So Apache Beam is the programming model that is run on the Dataflow runner. And so that is how those two are connected. And you'll wanna become familiar with Dataflow as well and see that relationship yourself. Okay, so let's start actually running this pipeline. Before I do anything, I need to jump into my Canvas instance and I need to create an access token that will be used by the code to actually pull the data. So in Canvas, you're gonna go to your account and go to your settings and there'll be a section called approved integrations. And this is where you can create a new access token. So you click new access token, you put in a little purpose, so ETL, 
put in an expiration date. So you can leave this blank, but I don't recommend it. I recommend that you rotate your access token on a regular basis just to be safe. And so we're gonna set it to expire at the end of the month. So I'll do that and say generate token. And I'm given this long token here that I'm going to copy because I'll need that later. The other thing I wanna do before I run this script is I wanna create a data set in BigQuery that is gonna house this Canvas data. And so in BigQuery, I click on the three dot menu and I say create data set. And I'm going to call this raw underscore canvas, data location, set it to the US, click create data set. So now let's go back to our GitHub repo and we're gonna run through the various steps here. So the first one is I want to enable the cloud auto scaling API. And so I just click on that link and it takes me to Google Cloud and I select my project and click continue. All right, so once that's enabled, we'll move on to the next step. So we're gonna to head to data flow in our Google Cloud project. We can do that a few ways. We can search at the top for data flow, that's one way. Or we can also use the left menu and we can scroll down until we see data flow. Here I've pinned it at the top. And the way that I did that was I scrolled down, I found data flow, and then I clicked the little pin icon. So we go to data flow, then we select a name. So down at the bottom are the actual uh, endpoints that you can retrieve data from using this script. And so we're gonna start with terms, then we're gonna move on to courses, and then assignments, enrollments, and sections. Well, those can actually be run in parallel. And so you'll create those three jobs at the same time without waiting for the previous one to finish. And then submissions and, and users can be run in parallel as well. So let's start with terms. So I'll copy that, jump over to data flow, and I will create job from template. My job name is going to be terms, jump back to GitHub, and it says to select custom template as my data flow template, and then put in this path. So let me go ahead and do that. Data flow template, scroll all the way to the bottom, click on custom template, and then for the path, paste that in there. Now when I did that, these required parameters came up. This job requires these four things, a canvas base URL. So what that is, is in your URL of your canvas instance, you copy that, paste it, and you take only up to the end of the .com. And then it needs a canvas API endpoint. That is these terms here. So we are running terms. And then your school year start date. So for this example, I'll just go ahead and put in, let's do September 1st. This has to be a, a year, month, and date in this format. And then you paste in your Canvas API token, which we got in that previous step. So now what I need to do, and it's shown here in GitHub, is I need to click on Show Optional Parameters, and under Additional Experiments, put in Enable Prime. So I encourage you to read about Dataflow Prime. It's a new kind of improvement or iteration on this Dataflow service, uh, and it has really nice pricing performance. And so I'll come over here, go to Additional Experiments, and paste in Enable Prime, scroll to the bottom, and click Run Job. When the job's running, you're gonna see this nice graph, and then along the top, you can also click on things like execution details, job metrics to see more information. When the job is complete, you'll get all of these green check marks, and if you go to Google BigQuery, you will see under your raw Canvas data set, you will see a table for terms. So if I click on that, I have these columns, and this is because this is the information that the API provided me with, and if I click on preview, I can see that I only have one term in my Canvas instance, but I see the data here. Here we are looking at an instance where the job has been run multiple times for all of those endpoints. And so here under raw Canvas, I see the terms, but then I also see things like assignments and courses and enrollments. And if I look at enrollments, we see 
toward the bottom, we have some nested repeated fields for user and grades that I can expand to see other data that's nested under grades. And so in the next video, we are going to write SQL that will actually unnest all of this and give you a nice tidy table that fits the LMS unified data model that can be used for your kind of analytics work. Okay, so you have a lot to kind of keep you busy now. Uh, you have hopefully a quick and easy way to pull Canvas data into BigQuery without touching code, but then you have many kind of layers to the onion that you can unpeel if you want to get into the Python code that I actually wrote to build this ETL script, if you want to get into Dataflow, a great Google Cloud product, if you want to get into Apache Beam, and then there'll be more than enough content to keep you busy coming up to actually take this data and transform it so you can build pretty cool data dashboards and reports. So make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and you'll be notified as those come out.